Hello everyone and welcome to IELTS Insider. My name is James and today I'm going to be looking at some more phrasal verbs for the IELTS test. So this is a follow-up video from a live stream I did um, a few weeks ago. If you want to watch that first video, the link is in the description. And we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to go through 10 commonly used phrasal verbs that can really help your um, fluency in the IELTS speaking test, but also useful for the writing test and for the other general English parts of that test and for you to talk about yourself in your everyday life. So that's going to be our um, lesson today. Um, please remember everyone to click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you everyone for supporting our channel. Please also check the links in the description of this video that give um, links to our other social media platforms and to our website. Um, so today's live stream, we are on YouTube, Twitter and Facebook. Please feel free to write in the comments um, or in the, the video chat any questions you have and also write in some of your example sentences when we cover each of today's phrasal verbs. Now, wow, we have a lot of comments coming in before we start today. So, yeah, let's go through some of them quickly. Kavinu is here. He's saying hi, everyone. And he's saying, hi, Robin from Sri Lanka. I'm not Robin Kavinu, but yes. Um, so he's also saying, in the morning, I completed all my homework and studied my subjects. Very good. I was watching some podcast of Jack and Kevin. Very nice. Ah, I thought this is Robin. Anyway, hi, James. Very good, Kavinu. Um... I'm sure this lesson will be ineffable. Okay. Layla is here. She's saying, hi, James. I hope you're doing well recently. Yes, I am doing well. Um, Layla, I've been quite busy on in the last few days. And then I am going to be traveling for a few days um, from tomorrow. So I'm getting prepared for that, Layla. Lavanya saying hi, James. Hi, Lavanya. Sleepwalker saying hello, everyone. Hello, Sleepwalker. And we've got some conversation with Leila, Lavanya. Oh, and then I'm getting a special hi from Sleepwalker. Very nice. And a bit of conversation between everyone. I really love this about our students in these live streams. Very, very friendly with each other, which is lovely to see. And Amin is here <coughs> and he's waiting for this important video to start. Very good. And Amin, I shared the link in all my groups. Thank you very much, Amin. That means a lot. The more students we can get in here and listening to these lessons, the better for everyone. So thank you, Amin. And Leila is talking about, okay, temperature, about 30 degrees C, I think. So I think, Sleepwalker, you are in Russia. Is that correct? Yeah. So quite warm. Wow. The forecast in Saudi Arabia is for 51 degrees. Very, very hot. Um, so some good here. Ah, here's an interesting comment. I saw in Japan women take umbrellas to protect themselves from the sun. Is that used in um, Saudi Arabia, Leila? Um, so usually... Um, Sleepwalker, we don't use the word umbrellas 
um, to talk about protection from the sun. Usually umbrellas are only used for protection against the rain. So even though it looks the same as an umbrella, people would usually use the word parasol to describe that little thing. But that's, I, I've seen that in Japan as well. It seems quite um, common for people to protect themselves from the sun with a parasol. Um, okay, so it's not common there. Yeah, only when it's raining. I think most countries sleepwalker, and that's where it's most common. Yeah. And don't forget to drink a lot of water. Okay. Big conversation going on here. Um, do you have any special drink for hot temperature besides water? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I know some people say that hot drinks can help cool you down in hot days. It always sounds um, like that wouldn't work, but some people think it does, yeah. Anna Maria is here. She's saying, hello, James. Good morning from my side. Good morning to you, Anna Maria. Um, drinking laminate and cold coffee. Okay. And lots of hellos coming in here as well. Hi, everyone. Very nice. And BB is here saying hello, Sleepwalker. Very nice. Amin saying hi, James. Hi, Amin. And Layla saying hi, I can hear and see you. Very important. Thank you, Layla. And lots of other hellos coming in here. Good morning from this silly world. Very nice, BB. Are you happy with your job, teacher? Yes, I am very happy. Um, Sage saying hello, sir. Hello to you, Sage. And Mirnawati is here. Hello, um, everyone. Really miss seeing you all in this live stream. Excellent. And Tan is here saying hello, everyone. Um, hello, Tan. I hope you are well today. Hello, James. How's it going? Yeah, Mirnawati, it's going quite well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've been a little busy in the last few days, but yeah, going quite well. Mirnawati, hi. Very good. James is the king of YouTube. Thank you very much, BB. Um, Sage, hi, sir. I am from Nepal. Very good. Um, thank you, Leila. I hope everything goes well as well. I don't enjoy traveling long distances, so uh, yeah, I hope everything goes well as well. And Arbind is here, love from Kolkata or Kolkata, sorry, in India. Very nice to see you here, Arbind. And Leila saying hi to Amin. And yes, I'm Russian. Yes, I thought I remembered that sleepwalker. And what have we got here? Do you visit Arabic countries, James? Well, I have visited some um, Arabic countries. I've visited uh, United Arab Emirates before. Um, and yeah, I think actually I think that's the only um, Arab Arabic country I have visited. It's raining cats and dogs here in India. Arbind, lovely use of um, the idiom here. It's raining cats and dogs, meaning it's the rain is very, very heavy. Excellent, Arbind. Are you severe or lenient with your students? Um, I think it depends on the situation, BB. Um, if I think students are giving um, their best effort and they're just making mistakes, I am quite lenient, I think, and encouraging. However, if I think students are not doing their best, I could be a little more severe. Um, okay, good, good. So I take it that's the word parasol. Yeah, so we use that as a kind of sunshade. Yeah. Um, Yep, I will write it down in the comments here. Parasol. So that should appear in the comments, Leila. 
And yes, iron cuts higher, iron hot for hot. Excellent, Arbind. Yeah, Parasol. And Jainanya. I'm sorry if I've pronounced your name incorrectly, but you're saying hello from Brazil. Hello to you. Jay Fry is here. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you. Um, Arbin, why don't you take other names as well? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by this question. Why don't you take other names as well? If you could clarify that, I could answer again. Do you understand British accent teacher? Yes, I do. I am a British person, so they are the most common accents I hear. So, yeah, I do. I wouldn't say either is better to learn. Yeah, I think learning all accents is important, British, American, Australian. Um, I think you've got to remember that most people using English in the world are using it as a second language. So learning Chinese, people speaking English, Japanese, um, Saudi Arabian, German, French, learning all accents is important. So I wouldn't say any one accent is more important from the um, other. Yes, I am from the UK. Mirnawati, yep. Arab countries, not Arabic countries. Yeah, so Arab countries, yeah, Arabic countries, I think Arabic is just the language, isn't it? Yeah, Arab des describing the people. And we've got Svetlana from, um, or Georgia, Georgia. Okay, I am from um, Scotland in the UK, Svetlana. And hello, sir, it's from Sage. Hello. And you are welcome from Georgia. Okay, I think you are our first student, uh, oh, for my first student from Georgia, Svetlana. So it's great to see so many students from other countries. Sage is from Nepal. Um, okay, so in your country, students learn the British accent and not American. Yeah, completely fine. I think a lot of countries, some of them um, learn from the, the British perspective, others from the American. Um, have you visited any museums while well, you're in the UK this time? Only one. I went to the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery in Glasgow. Um, but I haven't really had enough time. Oh, sorry, I visited another one called Colleen Castle as well. So I've visited two um, museums while I have been here. And Bharti is saying hello from India. Hello. Um, what countries will you visit tomorrow? Well, I will stop off in the U United Arab Emirates in Dubai, and then I will travel on to Korea. Not in USA. Okay, so the country, Georgia, not the state. Um, bad boy. Okay. Where are you? No, James. I'm not sure what you mean by this question, BB. Could you try that again? Okay, I think we've caught up with enough um, comments. I know you have a lot of castles in Scotland. Yes, there are so many castles. Um, also, England and Wales have a lot of castles um, as well. Um, yep, yeah, I am in the UK just now. I am in Scotland just now, but tomorrow I'll be traveling back to um, Korea. And yes, Georgia is near to Russia. I think next to kind of Azerbaijan and Armenia, kind of southern part of Russia, it's close to, yeah. Okay, so let us go on with today's um, lesson. As I said before, this is a follow-up lesson to the um, phrasal verbs um, lesson I gave a few weeks ago. So in that first lesson, I covered 10 commonly used phrasal verbs. I showed some examples of how to use them. 
And then I encouraged you to make some sentences using them. So we're going to do something similar today, um, but some different phrasal verbs. So before we start, I just want to give a quick explanation of what a phrasal verb is. So it is a collection of words um, and it will contain a verb and a preposition or an adverb, or you could have two prepositions or maybe a preposition and an adverb. So it's a collection of these words and it usually has a different meaning from the original verb. So here is an example of a phrasal verb, drop out of. So when you think of the word drop, it means to take something and you drop it. But the phrasal verb has a slightly different meaning from that. Drop out of is a phrase that means to no longer be a part of something. So you stop doing something or you stop taking something you could drop out. So some examples of this, John dropped out of college after his first year. So he was going to college and he decided he wanted to stop that. So we can use the phrase, phrasal verb dropped out of. Again, he dropped out of politics after the scandal. So this person was working in this field of politics. Then they stopped working there. They dropped out of. Um, here, I am going to drop out of my evening classes as I don't have enough time. So again, we are doing something and we decide to stop. We drop out of it. And it is usually used for work study, or some sort of extra courses that you are doing. So this just gives us an example <clears throat> of how we can make a phrasal verb and how the meaning of that phrasal verb is a little bit different from the original verb that is used. So when we use phrasal verbs, the verb tense changes like it would in a regular sentence. So the, it's only the verb that is going to change. So if we're looking at the past, drop out of becomes dropped out of. The preposition or the adverb in the sentence, in the, the phrasal verb never change. Only the verbs change. So why do we use these? Well, they are very commonly used in English, um, by native speakers, so they can make your speech sound um, more natural. Um, this can impress the examiners in the IELTS test. If you sound more natural, you will sound more fluent and coherent. However, using these phrasal verbs incorrectly can have the opposite effect and maybe make you look as though you don't know how to use them. So it is important to learn their meanings and practice using these phrasal verbs. So let's look at some more commonly used phrasal verbs. And our first one today is makeup. So we can see we've got the verb make. We've got um, a preposition here, up. So when we use make up together, it means to invent a story or a plan. So it's something that is not real. We have just created it. So an example of this, she made up the excuse of being stuck in heavy traffic. So this wasn't something that had happened. This wasn't something that was real. She has just made it up. Um, so you've created something. So fictional novels are all made up. They're not real. Somebody has created that story. They have made it up. So when we use this phrasal verb to make up something, it means to create 
um, or invent a story or a plan. So I think what we're going to do with the sentences today, if you would like, try to type in some sentences in the video chat um, for each of the phrasal verbs that I do. I'm not going to check your sentences after each phrasal verb, but after I go through the first five, I will then go into um, the um, chat and I will correct all of them together. So if you would like to write some of your own sentences using this phrasal verb makeup, I will come back to this later and I will correct or I will give feedback on your correct use of this phrasal verb. So just like I did here with some examples, she made up the excuse of being stuck in heavy traffic. Fictional novels are all made up. You could try to make some of your own sentences. So that's our first phrasal verb today, make up. Our second one is meet up. And this one is quite similar to the original meaning of the verb, to meet. To meet means to get together. To meet up is quite similar, but there is a little difference. Meet up means to attend a pre-arranged gathering. So this has been arranged before. So it's not like just using meet. Meet we can use to talk about chance meetings. Meet up is only used to talk about pre-arranged gatherings, pre-arranged meetings. So again, um, the former colleagues agreed to meet up at the nearest cafe. So here we're using it because it is a pre-arranged meeting. People are getting together. Asifa usually meets up with his family at the weekend. So again, we're changing the um, to the third person singular. So again, it's only the verb that's changing because we're talking about the person, Asifa, meets up. And this is a prearranged meeting. This is what usually happens at the weekend. So meet up is our second phrasal verb meaning to attend a pre-arranged gathering. So again, for this, if you would like, try to write some of your sentences into the chat and I will correct them a little bit later. So we're going to move on to number three. And number three is pick out. So, when we pick out something, we try to distinguish someone or something from a group. So let's say we have a lot of things that maybe are the same. So you've got a lot of apples and most of those apples are red, but some are green. Well, let's pick out the green apples. They are a little bit different from the red apples. So we're trying to distinguish those apples from the other apples. So that's what we're trying to do here. We've got an, an, another example. Let's pick out the bad tomatoes in the basket. So you have a basket full, out, full of tomatoes. Some are very good and healthy. Some are maybe rotten and bad. We don't want to keep the rotten uh, tomatoes, we're going to pick out them. We're going to pick them out of the basket. We can also use this when we're talking about shopping for clothes. I picked out a nice dress for Sarah's wedding. So we went to a store, there were lots of dresses and you picked out a nice dress. So pick out in English someone or something from a group. That is our, our third phrasal 
verb. So, um, I th think because there's so many comments coming in, I'm going to stop here for a second. Oh, yeah, there's a lot coming in. So, Leila is saying, is it okay using a lot of phrasal verbs for the IELTS exam? Yes, especially in the speaking exam. Um, the speaking exam, the examiner is looking for how natural you are in speech. And phrasal verbs are a very natural part of speech. People use them every day. So it is okay to use phrasal verbs in the IELTS exam. However, be careful that you are using them correctly. So yeah, especially in the speaking exam, also in the writing exam, phrasal verbs can be very, very useful as well. But I would say their main use would be in the IELTS speaking exam. Makeup plus verb ing. Yep. Yeah. So with all of these phrasal verbs, the verb can act like any other verb. So you could say, I am making up. I made up. He has made up. So the verb just acts like any other verb. Um, so we can use it all with all of the different grammar tenses we have in English. Yeah. So make up, we can have making up. So in the present continuous, for example, he is making this story up. He is making it up. So yeah. We can use it with verb plus ing. Everyone knew that he made up this story. Nevertheless, it was interesting to listen to. Yep, excellent sleepwalker. So everyone knew that he made up the story. It wasn't real. But nevertheless, it was interesting to listen to. Very, very good use of um, make up their sleepwalker. She always makes up stories while talking with her friends. Excellent, Layla. Really nice use. You've changed the verb to makes, third person singular, because we're talking about she. Lovely, lovely sentence. Um, so I would just say for the next, um, they are getting not believe her. They are starting not to believe her, I think would be better there, but very good. Ali is saying, I will make up my story. Very good. So we will create the story I will make up. Um, Janaina is saying, after the pandemic, I had to drop out. So here we're just missing one word, drop out of my ballroom dancing class. Drop out of. But yeah, very good. After the pandemic, I had to drop out of my ballroom dancing class. Amin is saying, what if I say to someone, make up your mind? Here I think it means think carefully. Um, make up your mind means I want you to make a decision. So not it's not really about thinking carefully. Make up your mind is used to tell somebody, I want you to make a clear decision. So let's some, say somebody is going, oh, I'm not sure. Do I want an Americano or do I want a cafe latte? Oh, I'm not sure. And the other person says, oh, come on, make up your mind, meaning make a decision, choose one thing. So it's got quite a different um, meaning from make up. So make up your mind is um, an idiom that we would use to mean um, make a decision. And usually it means make it quickly. Um, after traveling around the world, I made up my, I would change this a, a little bit. I made up a story about my experiences. Neki is here saying, hi, James. Very good. Hi, Neki. Excellent, Jainanya. My teacher is always making up new activities to improve our German classes. Perfect use here. Well, actually, 
Ah, yes, we've got a small typo, but yeah, the very, very good grammar. We're using present continuous here, suggesting that this is an activity that is ongoing. They are always making up new activities. Very nice sentence. They decided to meet up um, at 11 o'clock. So when we're giving times, Neki, we need to use at before this. I met up with my friend on Monday. Very, very good, Sleepwalker. We're changing the verb to the simple past here. Lovely. I cannot attend the meeting tomorrow as I am meeting up with my colleagues at noon. Excellent there, Murnawati. So here we're using present continuous. To, another use of this is to talk about future arrangements. Really nice sentence, Mirnawati. Tan is saying, my friend and I are going to meet up at the coffee, I would say the coffee shop next Wednesday. So there we're using um, future with be going to. So something that's really nice to see with your um, sentences today is all of the different grammar tenses that we're using. So it's excellent. We've seen some people using present continuous, simple past, simple present, future with be going to. And this is a really good example for everyone to show how when we use these phrasal verbs, we are only changing the, the main verb. So yeah, lovely sentence, Tan. Okay, so this one here, we would need the meet up with here. So my friends decided to meet up with some tourists next week. Ali is saying, yesterday I met up with my ex-friend. So not your friend now. So usually for ex, we would talk about ex for maybe girlfriend or boyfriend. So maybe I met up with my ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. If it's a friend, I would say old friend. So maybe somebody you haven't seen for a long time, we could use old friend. Um, Sleepwalker, I picked out the best song from the play playlist. Excellent use of pick out. We have a full playlist with lots of songs, and you've picked out the best one. Really good. So here, BB, I would change the grammar tense to the past. I dropped out of my music lessons. So this is something that is maybe in the past. So P-E-D, I dropped out. I will pick out some great movies on Netflix to watch next week with my friends. Very good. So we're going to look at all of the movies on Netflix and pick the ones out that we like. Very nice, Layla. Okay, they will pick. So this is a different phrasal verb. Um, we, we didn't do this, did we? Yeah. So pick up is a different one. Pick up means to collect someone. So they will pick me up. So that's got a kind of different meaning, Neki. So pick up means to collect. They will pick me up tomorrow in the morning. BB is saying, I made up a story for my wife when I forgot to bring the bread. Very, very good, BB. Lovely um, sentence. I meet up with my boss in the mall. So here, this would be maybe a regular meeting where you arrange to meet in the mall. Yeah. I pick out the red socks. So maybe, yeah, again, we don't like the red socks. We would maybe pick them out or we do like the red socks. We pick them out from all of the other socks. Good. Excellent, Lavanya. My sons make up a new story every night at bedtime. Excellent. So they are creating a story at night. It's lovely. 
Hendrik, I want to pick out the best flower from the garden. Lovely use of pick out there, Hendrik. I had picked out the gorgeous dress for my daughter before her friends picked her up at home. Yeah, I, I would change the to a here. I had picked out a gorgeous dress for my daughter before her friends picked her up at home. So yeah, um, a instead of the, but very good sentence. Your voice is breaking, James. Okay. I met up with my school friends a few days ago. Excellent, Lavanya. He made up silly excuses to escape his mom's punishment. Very good, BB. I think a lot of people did this when they were younger and they would make up a silly excuse to avoid um, their mom telling them they've done something wrong. My friends decided to meet up with some tourists next week. Yes, very good correction there, Layla. Ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend. Yes, sleepwalker, that's correct. I picked out some vegetables in my kitchen garden. I would just change in to from here and then that sentence is perfect. I picked out some vegetables from my kitchen garden. And Jananya is saying, after browsing the Netflix catalogs um, for hours, I still pick out bad movies. <laughs> OK, so even if you look there at every movie and you spend a lot of time, you still pick out a bad movie. Very good. I picked out my suffering. Um, I'm not really sure what this one means here, Ali. I don't know if this really works here. So suffering is not really something we would pick out and, and choose here. I had, to, I had to cancel my meet up with friends due to heavy rain last weekend. Very nice. Let's pick out the bad potatoes from the basket. Excellent, Nadim. And she picked out the red lipsticks for the party. Very, very nice. So we've caught up with um, the comments here. So we are going to go on to our next phrasal verb, which is put off. And when we put off something, it can mean to postpone something to a later date. So um, let's say we have arranged to meet with our children and play outside in the play park, but it rains really heavily. So we cancel that arrangement and we say we will do it later. We will do it in an, on another day. So when we postpone something um, for, to a later time or a later date, we can put it off. So for example, the seminar has been put off because of the pandemic. So we had a seminar that was organized, but we've had to cancel it and reorganize it for a later date because of the pandemic. So we put that seminar off. We will have to put off the concert due to the bad weather. So maybe there was an outdoor concert and it started raining and maybe a storm and it's not safe to have the concert anymore. So we will have to put the concert off. So put off is another very useful expression when we're talking about postponing something and we will reorganize for a later date. We can put it off. So again, you can try to use this phrasal verb to make some sentences. I will um, correct them and give you feedback in a few minutes. I will go through another two or three phrasal verbs and then come back and look at all of your um, sentences. So put off means to postpone something. Our fifth phrasal verb is to rule out. And 
to rule out something is to exclude it from something or say something is not possible. So if we rule something out, we are basically saying this is not going to happen or you are not allowed to do this. We rule it out. So some examples here. Jessica has been ruled out as a suspect in the murder case. So originally, Jessica, the police thought Jessica maybe is the killer. But then they found some evidence and then they think, no, it wasn't Jessica. So she has been ruled out as a suspect. No longer a suspect. Here's another example. John's age ruled him out of applying for the position. So let's say there's a position in a job and they say you must be under 30 years old to apply for this job. And John is 32 years old. So it's not possible for John to apply for the job. So he has been ruled out. So there's what we're meaning with rule out, to exclude from something or say something is not possible. So John's age ruled him out of applying for the position. Maybe he's too old or too young. Jessica has been ruled out as a suspect in the murder case. Yep, she is no longer a suspect. She has been excluded from that investigation. So rule out meaning to exclude um, or to say something is not possible. Our sixth phrasal verb is sort out. And sort out um, has two kind of meanings here. It can mean to arrange things in um, an order that is according to the type. So, for example, if I was to sort out my CD collection, I may sort it out by the artist's name. Or some people may sort out their CD collection by alphabetical order, which person comes first. So that is one meaning, to arrange things systematically according to type. But I think probably the more commonly used meaning for sort out is to resolve a problem or difficulty. So let's say your Wi-Fi is having a problem and it's not working correctly. Well, maybe you call the engineer and they come out to sort out the problem. So the engineer sorted out my Wi-Fi connection. So we can use sort out to talk about, um, to mean two different things, to arrange things in a particular order or to resolve a problem. So some examples here, sort out the things you want to keep and throw the rest. So let's say you're moving house and you have lots of items and you need to think about which ones do I keep and which ones do I throw away? So there's how we can sort out those items into two groups, keep and throw away. So there we are sorting out with the first meaning, which is to arrange things. The second meaning, I sorted out the scheduling problem we had. So we had a problem, I fixed it. So I can say I sorted out the problem. So there we're looking at the second meaning, to resolve a problem or um, difficulty. Okay, so there's are two examples of sort out. So I think what we'll do is we'll go back to check some of your examples. So what should we have? We should have put off, rule out, and sort out. Okay, 
So Anna is saying here, I had to put off my trip to Madrid because of the pandemic. Excellent. So we've cancelled it and we will try to reschedule at a later date. It has been postponed. Perfect grammar here, Anna Maria. The match was put off due to heavy rain. Very good, BB. So again, we've had to postpone the match and maybe it will be played at a later date. The lazy boy put off his homework. Excellent, BB. So again, not doing your homework now, I will do it later. So you can put off your homework. Very nice. I am putting off this class because I am sick. Very nice, Hendrik. The meeting can't be put off several times this year. Very good. So here we've got a negative sentence saying we cannot put it off. It's impossible to postpone it. So, yeah, very nice sentence, Sleepwalker. They put off their marriage. Very good, BB. And again, this was something that was very common during the, the pandemic. A lot of people put off their marriages. Um, excellent. I had to put off my IELTS class because of the COVID pandemic. Excellent, Tan. Really nice sentence again. And again, this is another common thing that is happening in the world. A lot of people have had to postpone classes. My diploma defense was put off to 30th of July. Excellent, Neki. So there we're also showing that it was it was cancelled, but you're also showing the new date that you're going to do it. Excellent. My diploma defense was put off to 30th of July. Please don't put off what will you do. So, Ali, we would change this a little bit. Please don't put off things that you have to do, I think would be better. Please don't put off things that you have to do. But, yep, yeah, nice. We cannot rule out any possibility. Excellent sleepwalker. Again, nice use of a negative sentence here. And this is something that would be um, common in any sort of investigation, whether that be research or maybe some sort of detective investigation. But especially in research, you cannot rule out any possibility at the beginning of your research. Everything should be possible. So that's a really excellent sentence, Sleepwalker. I have to put off watching James live stream later because of the bad connection. Okay. I would just put in until later here, but yep, yeah, very good sentence. He was ruled out from entering the concert because he didn't have a ticket. Very good there, BB. I was ruled out of that group because I was sending too many stickers. Excellent. Your age. OK, so here we probably want to tell the age. So maybe if your age is too young, it rules you out for applying for a driver's license. So if your age is every country is a little bit different. So I think in the UK it's 17. So if you are below 17, you are ruled out from applying for a driver's license. Okay, so you've added a little bit extra there, Neki, because of COVID-19. I was overwhelmed with the pile of jobs as I was always... I would, put, I would use um, putting off. I was always putting off doing them. I was always, oh, ah, sorry. No, no, this is fine, Mirnawati. I would just change it to them. I always put off doing them. Okay. Hendrik, my body is short, so that's the reason why I, I was ruled out from the police. I was ruled out from the police. So, yeah, there are certain rules if you're below a certain height, you cannot join um, the police. 
So I was ruled out from the police. What sort out do you like? So this sentence doesn't really work here, um, Ali. Um, yeah, that, that's not going to work in this sentence. It looks like, so maybe you could change this. Do you like sorting things out? Might be um, better here. My political meeting was put off because of rain. Ex excellent, Lavanya. I have to sort out many bugs every day at work. Now, do you mean by sorting out you have to swat them with a fly swatter or something? But very good sentence there, Anna Maria. Lack of experience ruled John out from getting the job. Excellent sentence, Amin. So this was the thing that stopped him getting the job. It ruled John out. Very, very nice. He sorted out the situation as quickly as he could. Excellent sleepwalker um, that we've got the problem and you're describing um, the speed in which he can do it. Nice. He can't sort out the mathematical equation. Um, so for this, although sort out works grammatically, BB, I think usually we wouldn't use this for this specific um, occasion. We usually, the word solve, we usually use solve instead of sort out for this. So he can't solve the mathematical equation. So I suppose that's another thing about phrasal verbs. It's about when we use them as well. I tried to sort out my schedule today to watch James's live stream. Excellent use of the phrasal verb sort out Layla. I have a problem with my car, so I will call a mechanic to sort out my car. Very good, Hendrik. I will sort, so I would maybe put another word. I will sort things out by age and ability. Yep, that would be possible then. Good, Ali. Excellent. I need your help, James, to sort out my speaking problem. Very nice, Amin. Okay, could you please explain more? Rule out, I can't catch the meaning well if you don't mind. No problem, Leila. So, rule out meaning you can't do something because of some sort of regulation. So, let's say... Um, you go to the fairground with your son and the roller coaster says you must be over 140 centimetres, but your son is only 130 centimetres. He is ruled out from going on to that roller coaster because he doesn't meet the requirements. So he's had to be excluded from something um, because of another um, aspect of his life. So it could be used, as we've seen in some of the examples, you can be ruled out because you don't have enough experience for a job. So therefore you are ruled out. It's not possible for you to get that job. Um, so yeah, it's really about excluding um, people because they don't meet the requirements for another thing. So I hope that's helped a little bit, Layla. Let me know if you want further explanation and I'll try to do that. So here I would change this to either future or past Neki. So maybe mom sorted out the kitchen, she threw out the old stuff or Mum is going to sort out the kitchen. She is going to throw out the old stuff. So here I would change it either to past or to future, depending on when you're thinking this idea of sorting out the kitchen will happen. I have to sort out my daily schedule to avoid putting my duties off. Very good use of that there. 
my computer is hanging out. So, so maybe I would say here, my computer has a problem. Um, I need to sort it out. So my computer has a problem. I need to sort it out. J Fry, the flight was delayed and the result, the meeting had to be put off. Very good. The teacher always rules her out of the classes because she makes a lot of noise. Is that correct? For this, I would I wouldn't use rule out because usually here, if somebody's making a lot of noise, the the teacher will put them out. So I think teacher always puts her out of class because she makes lots of noises. Slightly different um, use. So I wouldn't use rule out in this particular sentence, Layla. I had to sort out many issues at work by myself. Great use there. He was ruled out from entering the mall because he was not wearing his mask. Stupid boy. Excellent BB. So there we can see how ruled out is used. He sorted out a bunch of technical issues on his PC last night. Great. I'm just going to go through the others quickly. I was planning to sort out, sort out my books. Oh, so yeah, you're breaking up the phrasal verb. No problem here. I was planning to sort my books out today, but I had to put it off because I was invited to go to the movies. Excellent. You're using two of our phrasal verbs today, uh, Jananya. Lovely, lovely sentence. Exclude means rule out. Yes, that is correct, sleepwalker. Okay. You're welcome, Leila. Okay, so not I am, just I was. I was ruled out of the discotheque because I didn't show my ID. Rob was ruled out from many chatting groups because he was always sharing lips links of cryptocurrency. Excellent. I have already ruled out a fellowship as I didn't have an acceptable English. Okay, so here I have already been ruled out of a fellowship. I think we'll change that a little. They ruled me out of a concert because my voice wasn't good enough to be a singer. Okay, good, good. A president's job is to sort out the country's problem. Excellent. I have been ruled out of fellowship as I didn't have an ex I have been ruled out of a fellowship. Yeah. Oh, what is your best cuisine, James? I think favorite cuisine I think probably Indian. Indian cuisine is my favorite. I love curries. I love naan bread. Yeah, I think Indian. To be honest, BB, I love food from all around the world. I love Italian, Thai, Korean, Japanese, Chinese. But I think Indian food would be my favorite. Okay, let's go on to our final four um, phrasal verbs. Number seven today is stumble upon. And this is to find or learn about something unexpectedly. We don't really, um, we're not looking for something. We find it by accident. So some examples here. He stumbled upon a nice picnic area on his way home. So he was walking home. He didn't know there was a picnic area there but he just saw it and thought, oh, that's quite nice. He stumbled upon a nice picnic area. So I stumbled upon an old castle while walking in the forest. So we found this old castle, but we didn't plan to find this. It was just something that we came across and it wasn't expected. So... <clears throat> We can also use this when we're finding information as well. So let's say you are on Google and you're just searching some things and you find something that is quite interesting. That's another use of stumble upon. I stumbled upon a good article on the 
Chinese banking situation. So we found something by accident we can use stumble upon. So again, this is a, a very useful and commonly used phrasal verb to um, talk about finding things unexpectedly or by accident. So again, you can write some of your sentences in the comments. I'll come back and check them all later. Our next phrasal verb is to take after. So this means either to look like or act like someone in your family. So if we take after someone, it's basically showing the same behavior or having the same appearance as a relative, someone in your family. So for example here, you should take after your brother who is a hardworking student. So that's maybe something a mom would say to one of her children, look, your brother is working very hard. You are not. You should take after him. So you should behave like your brother. You really take after your mother. Your faces are almost identical. So here is where we're talking about appearance. Your mother's face and you look almost the same. So we can say you really take after your mother you look like your mother. So two different ways we can use take after, either to talk about someone's um, behavior or someone's appearance, to take after. So again, you can type some sentences in here while I go on to explain the final two phrasal verbs from today. And number nine is turn down. And turn down means to reject or refuse something that was offered to you. So let's say um, somebody has offered you um, a free meal at a restaurant, but you don't want it. You could turn it down. So when somebody offers you something, but you say, no, I don't really want this we turn it down. So some examples again, she turned down the job offer as the salary was too low. So they said, you've got the job, but she looked and said, that's not enough money. I don't want this job. So she has turned down the job, rejected it. Another example, I turned the chance to go abroad to study. So I, sorry, typo here, it should be I turned down. Sorry, guys. I turned down the chance to go abroad to study as I didn't want to leave my family. So I was given this opportunity to go to another country to study, but I thought I don't really want to leave my family here. So I turned down the chance. So turn down meaning to reject something. So again, you can um, write some of your comments in the, the chat while I do our final phrasal verb, which is zone out. And zone out is to fall asleep or lose concentration or daydream. So sometimes you're watching maybe something or listening to something and you start oh, thinking about something else or maybe just falling asleep. That is what we mean by zone out. So for example here, he was so exhausted that he zoned out for a while. I always zone out when I watch action movies. So while I'm watching action movies, I can see the movies there, but I'm not really paying attention. And maybe I'm thinking about something else. Or oh, what do I need to do tomorrow? Or sometimes I'm just not thinking and maybe falling asleep. So we can use this phrasal verb zone out to describe that. Lose concentration or con consciousness not concentrate fully on something, maybe we start daydreaming. 
we zone out. So maybe some of you today have been watching this live stream and not paid full attention and you started thinking about oh something else. Maybe you have zoned out for a while. And sometimes we could zone out for maybe 10 seconds or one minute, sometimes even longer. We can zone out for maybe 10 minutes or something like that. So to fall asleep or lose concentration is to zone out. So again, you can use some of your examples um, and write them in the chat. What I'm going to do is go back and look at some sentences from our other phrasal verbs. Amin is saying, on my way home, I stumbled upon a new gas station. Excellent. So we didn't expect to find that gas station. We didn't know it was there. We found it by mistake. Excellent sentence. I stumbled upon your ad while checking my mail. Excellent. Again, we're not expecting to find the ad, but we came across it um, kind of by accident or unexpectedly. Perfect. I stumbled upon a thousand dollars on my way to work. Excellent again. And very lucky if this happens to you. So I stumbled upon. I didn't expect it. Lovely. Layla is saying, I stumbled upon a great website to learn English while searching about the meaning of some specific words. Perfect, Layla. This is really good to show um, how it, we can use stumble upon to talk about information and very important um, use of this. Excellent sentence. I stumbled upon Google. So here... You wouldn't stumble upon Google because I think everybody already knows Google, but maybe you stumbled upon an article on Google that said we can learn English in seven days. So I stumbled upon an article on Google that said we can learn English in seven days. So. I take after my mother because she's an old woman. So that would suggest as well, Hendrik, that you are old. So I, so usually when we're talking about take after, we're talking about um, how you look or your height or your personality, not usually about age. So maybe I would try to think about using take after again there. My son takes after me, but looks like his mother. So here we know then Amin is talking about his son's personality and character is similar to his, but his looks are more like his mother. Excellent sentence, Amin. They always say to me, you are taking after your mom. Um, here, I don't think we need the present continuous. I would just use you take after your mom. OK, you take after. I take after a mother with people. Mm. So usually it would have to be not our mother. It would have to be my mother, because when we take after people, it's about our relatives. So maybe I would say I take after my mother, always asking if they eat healthy food. So there is a behavior that your mother has. And you have that same behavior. I take after my mother. Sleepwalker saying twins take after each other. Yes, very, very good. I stumbled upon YouTube when I searched links. Ah, so I stumbled upon you on YouTube when I searched links for learning English language. Very good, Neki. So we just need on YouTube here. So you found me by accident. I mean, I offered my manager a gift, but he turned it down. Excellent use here. So you tried to give him a gift, but he said, no, I don't want this. He turned it down. My college application was unfortunately turned down. Perfect sentence, Jay Fry. He turned down a lucrative offer because he wasn't sure he could do it. 
perfect sentence sleepwalker um okay so i turned mm. so i would say here i would change this around a little bit anna maria so he asked to be my boyfriend but i turned him down because I don't like long distance relationships. So I'm just changing the word order a little bit. He asked to be my boyfriend, but I turned him down because I don't like long distance relationships. I stumbled upon a backpack filled with gold on my way to the supermarket. Very lucky, Mirnawati. I would love to stumble upon a backpack filled with gold. Very nice. I was going to the hill station and stumbled upon some new waterfalls. Excellent. So this is something we hadn't seen before. Lovely. The lecture was so boring, so I zoned out. Excellent use of that, Amin. I turned down the money from my mother because I have my own job. Excellent, Hendrik. That's a good sentence. I always zone out. So it's zone, not zoom. Zone out when I'm at the meeting of conferences. So I would just say I always zone out when I'm at a meeting or conference. I zone out easily when the teacher's voice is boring. I think all of us do the same, Anna Maria. Very good. I take after my aunt as I am a fun person. Excellent, BB. Perfect sentence. He turned down the scholarship because... His mum can't bear it if he moved to another country. So we have to change his, and I would change can't to couldn't. So he turned down the scholarship because his mum couldn't bear it if he moved to another country. Shananya is saying, I always zoned out on history classes when I was in high school. Very, very good. I never zone out during James's lesson. Thank you, BB. I always zone out when I listen to music. Me too, Hendrik. I can just think about some other things. I zoned out at the cinema because the movie was not interesting. What a shame. Excellent sleepwalker. Kids zone out a lot during online classes from school. Perfect, Anna Maria. I stumbled upon cheap jeans while I was shopping. Excellent, BB. We don't need a here because jeans is plural. So just, I stumbled upon cheap jeans. People said that I take after my mom, especially in my appearance. Okay, very nice, Mirnawati. She always zones out while doing, while she is doing her homework. Excellent, BB. He takes after his dad as he is a tall person. Another perfect sentence, BB. During my son's study time, he zones out of his topic. He zones out of his topic. But good, Lavania. I stumbled upon a good clothing sale while searching for a new washing machine. Good. So we weren't expecting. <coughs> so we need to get rid of this and just clothing sale. But yeah. This is a great example. We weren't expecting this. And I turned down. OK, I would just say. Get rid of to receive and just I turned down the money he gave me as I didn't need it. <clears throat> so I turned down the money he gave me as I didn't need it. And Jananya, I don't take after any members of my family. I guess I was adopted. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe. One of my sisters takes after me very well. Some people can't distinguish between us. Okay. <clears throat> and rather than very well, takes after me a lot, I would use here. But yeah, very, very nice. Last Valentine, I offered my wife a bar of chocolate, but she turned it down because she wanted a, nex a necklace. Boring wife. Okay, good, BB. I had a job offer a few years ago that I turned down because of my family. Perfect sentence here, Lavanya. 
And I think this is a very common situation that people find themselves in. Great example. She always zones out when her husband talks to her. So, yeah, <clears throat> I think this is very common in long-term relationships. One person is talking, the other is zoning out. And I would be regretful if I had turned down my new job. Excellent sentence here. Okay, so I think a lot of you have had some good practice using these phrasal verbs. What we're going to do next is we're going to look at some sentences with missing words. And all of these missing words will be using phrasal verbs that we have studied today. And I just want you to write the correct answers in the chat. So while we are writing the answers, always write the number. So my university course is too difficult for me, so I will have to. So if you look at my example answer here, I've put number one and drop out. So when you're answering the questions, just put the number first and then what do you think the answer is? Also remember, you may have to change the grammar of the phrasal verb to um, past or future, whatever kind of um, grammar tense. So my university course is too difficult for me, so I will have to drop out. If we remember, drop out we can use to mean we stop doing something. It's too difficult. I will have to drop out. So <clears throat> what about number two? I can never pay full attention in morning lectures. I always something. People often say I something my mother. I'm late for work again. I need to something, something, a believable excuse. So you can put some of your answers in here. Chananya is saying zone out for number two. And Anna Maria is also saying number two is zone out. Ali is saying drop out for number two. Bibi is saying zone out. Mirnawati, zone out. Leila, zone out. Yes. So I never pay full attention, meaning I don't concentrate much. I always zone out. So that was our answer for number two. People often say I. So let's see. J Fry is saying take after my mother. <coughs> Janaina is saying take after. And Hendrik is saying take after. BB take after. Anna Maria, Mirnawati, take after. Yes, Leila, take after. Very good. People often say, I take after my mother. <coughs> Number four, I'm late for work again. I need to something, something, a believable excuse. So let's see what answers we have for number four. Sleepwalker is saying, I need to make up. Jananya, make up. Very good. Bibi, make up. Mirnawati, make up. Layla, make up. J Fry, make up. Anna Maria, make up. Very good, everyone. Lovely. I'm late for work again. I need to make up a believable excuse. Okay, let's look at numbers five to 10. So we've got some other sentences here. When I go shopping, it's always hard to something, something, clothes that suit me. Number six, it's always nice when I, something, something, new information that can help me with my studies. Number seven, I was offered a new smartphone contract, but I something it something. And number eight, my company 
something something the annual party we will now have it next month so what do we think about these number five sleepwalker is saying pick out layla pick out lavanya saying pick up no, pick up was not one of our phrasal verbs today, Lavanya. Mirnawati, pick out. Hendrik, pick out. Jananya, pick out. Yes. Um, Lavanya, pick out. Yeah. So when I go shopping, it's always hard to pick out clothes that suit me. Number six, it's always nice when I something. So. What answers do we have? Sleepwalker is saying stumble upon. J Fry, stumble upon. Layla, stumble upon. Jananya, stumble upon. Very good, everyone. This is the correct answer to number six. It's always nice when I stumble upon new information that can help me <clears throat> with my studies. Excellent, guys. Number seven, I was offered a new smartphone contract, but I something it something. Let's see what answers we've got here. Turned it out, not turned it out. Sleepwalker, you've corrected yourself. Good. Turned it down. Um, what else did we have here? Jananya turned down. Very good. Layla, we need to change the grammar a little bit here because we're talking about the past. So turn becomes turned. Mirnawati, the same. Turn needs to change. So yeah, J Fry's got it again. I was offered a new smartphone contract, but I turned it down. Turned and down are the missing words. So, one more. My company, something, something, the annual party. We will now have it next month. Let's see. Who has got this? Sleepwalker is saying put off, sort out. Hmm. So I think we cannot use sort out here because it's saying we will have it next month. So we've already sorted it out. So I don't think this one is possible, Layla. Um, Jananya, put off. Yeah, Mirnawati's used sort out. Um, we cannot use that there. Um, Layla is saying put off. Lavanya, put off. Yes. So my company put off. So remember, that means to postpone something. So now we are having it next month. So it put off the annual party. We are having it next month. Postpone to a later date. Yeah, Mirnawati, you have got it. Okay. One last thing. I would like you to do some homework. I want you to choose one of today's phrasal verbs and write a paragraph describing something in your life. So you could talk about when something was put off. Maybe you had a Christmas party or a birthday party or something, and it was postponed. Tell me what happened. Maybe you could write about who you take after, or something you turned down, or a time you made up an excuse or story. So we can use any of the 10 phrasal verbs today, and you're just going to write a paragraph. Now, that can be as long or as short as you want. If you only want to write three or four sentences, fine. If you want to write more, fine. So whichever phrasal verb you choose, that is your choice. But write your paragraph, and you can post your homework in the comment section of this video on YouTube where I will give you some feedback. So that is the homework from today's lesson. 
Please remember to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's lots of um, useful videos there. Also, you can look at some of our other social media as well. Um, if you have missed some parts of today's lesson, you can go back and watch them again on YouTube. So we're going to finish off there. Just a few comments. Sleepwalker saying thank you. You are welcome, Sleepwalker. Mirnawati, wash hands. How impressive this class was today. You're very welcome, Mirnawati. Ali, you are welcome. I hope you have a nice day too. Juju K, pity I am late. You can always go back and watch later, Juju K. You're welcome, Lavanya. And Leila, you're welcome. And, and uh, Neki, you are also welcome. Um, Jay Fry, yeah. Okay, everyone. So I'll hopefully see you um, for the next live stream on Wednesday. However, I may have to put off Wednesday's live stream depending on how my travel goes in the next few days. So thanks for joining everyone and I will see you in the next live stream. Bye for now.